Now, when we hear the word robot, we tend to think of the future, but man has actually been creating them for centuries. From a clockwork swan to a singing robot, London Science Museum has brought them together. Get ready to be fascinated and a little bit freaked out. Why do people build machines that look like them? And what does that say about us? About 100 robots that have invaded the Science Museum in London could help us find out. From simple automation to interactive droids, the robots exhibition takes us back 500 years. It's one thing we understand at the Science Museum is that visitors, people, are fascinated with themselves. We love seeing ourselves reflected in um, the cultural artifacts around us, in the technology that's created for us. We think that humanoid robots are this brilliant combination of hubris and science and technology, but also a healthy dose of egocentricity, creating these uh, machine things in our image. Among the star attractions is this humanoid robot that sings and acts for visitors. But this silver swan automaton dates back to the 18th century. All these creations hold a mirror to human society. We build them to try to better understand ourselves. By building something, you, you come to understand it better and you, you realise what you don't know about it yet. Um, so that we have a lot to learn about the human body. Um, and the way our minds work as well. We build them in order to entertain ourselves. I mean, robots have been a huge part of science fiction and culture, uh, literature, theatre for a very long time. Here's a replica of Maria, a character from the 1927 sci-fi film Metropolis. But it won't be fair to skip the Terminator. This robot was used in the franchise's fourth movie. Moving on to machines that are not trying to kill us, the exhibition also has robots designed to take care of people. This droid is used as a teacher and therapist for children. They all show how far humanity has come with technology, but there's still more work to be done. It's surprising how far away we are from being able to recreate a person uh, in, in a robotic form. The most advanced learning robot that we have on gallery uh, is actually called the iCub, and that has the intelligence of a five-year-old child. So after uh, the five centuries of investigation and research and development, this is how far we've come. But that's not surprising. The human being, the human brain and the body is one of the most complex things in the universe, and we're, we're still a ways yet from being able to recreate that. If scientists finally manage to do that, what might happen next? According to physicist Stephen Hawking, it could be either the best or the worst thing ever to happen to humanity.